so it's uh, been great. I mean, I don't know if you know the background story behind this, um, <clears throat> but I've been building and racing uh, vehicles, mostly English type of cars, or things you like Fiat bodies or Jaguar engines. And uh, I did that for a number of years. And then I also built engines and um, made parts of vehicles for other racers. So it's been a very apprenticeship all the way through and uh, kind of got to the latter end of now, I'm 71 years old now, and uh, about six years ago, <coughs> my wife said, well, why don't you build another car for me? I said, you sure? You really want me to build another car? And she said, well, yeah, yeah, you, well, you've done all the other stuff for the other guys, why don't you do one for yourself? So I did start to look then for typically American-type gas or something like a Nova or something like that. But in the UK, from uh, American vehicles and that hold their price, they are expensive. And I couldn't find anything that was within my seriously low budget. So uh, I kind of gave up on it. And then I was looking on eBay for uh, other bits and bobs and I flicked through and I suddenly saw the Volvo. And it had been stripped out. The guy couldn't rebuild it as a classic vehicle because he just didn't have the cash. Uh, all the panels and that were so expensive. So he decided to strip it out, sell all the parts, and basically the shell and the axle from what was left. And he had that on eBay for a nice sensible money as I thought, which in your terms would probably be about $1,100. So I said, right, we'll have that. And that was the start of it, really. I had no real design idea in my head for it. I just kind of knew it, it, it would probably make a good guess. Or I'd seen older pictures in the American magazines of the Corvettes that they'd done. And uh, I kind of like the style of it. So that's where it started. And on the journey back from when we collected it, we live in the West Country in England, which is sort of down south. And the car was in London, which is the other side of England. And on the trip over there, uh, a friend of mine, I borrowed his truck and trailer to go and get it. And on the way back, we started chatting. And he said, I can't see you making a gas van, eh? Yeah, just not the right sort of thing. Yeah, I think it is. Oh. And um, so during the, the conversation coming back, the end, the end of it, we formed a bit of a partnership to get it built. Because you kind of thought, mm, yeah, it might be. So that's how it actually got started. And uh, the gentleman's name is Steve Wright. Uh, he, he owns quite a, a big, it's not as big as this, but it's quite a big garage as such. Bigger than what you normally get. And uh, he used to basically rebuild other people's cars that he was struggling with or he bought them cheap and update them. And so we got it into his garage and started taking it apart. Well, the little Volvo engine that was in there, there's no way we were going to get a big block Chevrolet in there, so everything had to come out. So it's kind of cut the middle out, or the front out. And then we re it, um, fitted the big block Chevrolet engine in it, uh, transmission, forward axle in the back. It, it kind of built itself. And then we, we got to the front axle. And I thought, I well, don't fancy buying one, because when you buy stuff from the USA, it's cheap here. But by the time it gets to England, it's virtually the dollar to pay price. So it gets to be very expensive. So I thought, I'll make, I'll make an axle. So we made the axle and put it under the car. And, springs from the from the Sherpa van as we used the donor vehicle. And uh, originally the Sherpa van has a big diesel engine in it, so it's quite heavy and we thought well, it's about the same weight as a big Chevy engine. And we thought well we'll put it in it, it'll go down maybe four or five inches. So got it in there, got the cream on it, dropped it down in and it kind of went and that was it. And we went, you got the cream off? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. it went, oh. Of it's now like at that angle. Instead of that angle, it kind of pulled it a bit. And put, stood there and looked at it and thought, well, that ain't so bad, really. That's quite, quite original. Yeah. Well, you know, it looks like it's going before it's even gone. <laughs> and um, so we kind of left it at that, for that. And then we got to exhaust systems. And normally for gases, they have them out under the fender wall, right the side, right at the bottom. So we kind of thought, Twisty pipes, and we'll just stick them straight through the side of the car. Put most of the crew pipes on. That's what we did. 
Macron had made it look more like Spitfire-ish. And the car was actually green when we got it. It was actually painted the original colour was green. And we thought, well, we'll just repaint it green when we finish doing all the body work. Because it saved us doing all the door shuts and boot internals and stuff like that. So that's how it became green. And it did have another name for it originally. A little town where we built it, or close to it, it was called Wellington. So we were going to call it the Wellington Bomber, which also fitted in with the green, with the second world war sort of thing. And we were going to do a few other trick bits on it. We were going to like a, make a big uh, petrol tank in the back in the shape of a bomb. And the idea was going to have a boot bit and have that on it, bomb bay. But we kind of dropped that idea because the car has also been a Volvo. It hooks in with an old TV program from the 1960s. The same. It was very popular then. Uh, you can probably Google it and find out what that's about. And we thought, well, yeah, we'll go with that and call it Ain't No Sink because it's a bit of a bad boy. And uh, that's how that kind of came about. So it kind of, kind, of, kind of built itself over the period of about 18 months. And then we raced it. And, uh, but after about a year or so of doing that, the partner, like I said, Steve, he decided it wasn't quite his bad. I don't know why really, but he can kind of fall out of love with a lot of the projects he does. Uh, once he's completed them, he kind of like, oh, I don't want to move on, you know, which was okay, but it kind of left me with quite a few problems. I, I didn't actually have a trailer or a truck to tow it, and I had to kind of sort of that because that was part of the deal that he supplied that, and I supplied all the mechanical knowledge to build it, because uh, he had all the facility and I had the knowledge. What's the blower? What's the blower? The blower is a 671 GMC. I mean, I can run you quickly through the spec if you want. Yeah, 